Well, hey, how y'all doing out there today? Uh, listen, in light of what's going on with all the news coming out of Saudi Arabia about the the murdered uh, reporter, uh, who's actually y'all was a spy for the CIA and the Mossad. Um, basically, uh, I kind of wanted to explain this, and it, it goes way back, and it culminates into what's happened probably since uh, the the Marine uh, bombing uh, in Beirut, uh, I believe in '86. Um, how the Shah of Iran, um, how we put people over there in charge like uh, Saddam Hussein and the Shah of Iran. Um, all of this really comes down to basically the United States petrodollar and believe it or not, our national security because at one point in time, Saudi Arabia and the Middle East was the biggest, um, the OPEC countries were the biggest um, uh, dealers in oil to the United States. As a matter of fact, we relied solely on it. And from, I believe, October of 1973 to March of 1974, they had the oil embargo. And by the time Jimmy Carter got to be president, that's why we heard all the lies about there not being any gas. Um, we we're running out of gas. We we're running out of oil. And of course, today we see that that was a lie. But when OPEC shut the doors on oil, that almost shut America down. And guess what? Our military as well runs on the oil. So you're like, well, Bill, how does that play in today with this Saudi journalist in Venezuela and, and these things going on. Well, before I start, I just want to point out one thing. Saudi Arabia and Venezuela both announced that they were going to use different currencies. In fact, Venezuela is going to use the euro, and I believe Saudi Arabia and most of North Africa and what's left of the Middle East wants to use the Chinese yen. As you all should well know by now, the U.S. dollar, especially the petrodollar, is in a serious decline and probably going to collapse probably into 2019. But I, I, I don't hope that. I don't wish that. It's gonna, we're going to suffer. We, are, we, the people, are going to suffer because of this in America. But here's the story. As I said, we had the oil embargo uh, back in 73 and 74, and the United States uh, military, um, along with the United States government, and the New World Order International Monetary Fund, Rothschild Bank, we're very concerned about this. Um, they saw an upcoming power that these they felt these Middle Eastern ragheads didn't have any right having any power over the world's oil supply. And like I said, they put in their puppets. Uh, Saddam Hussein is probably one of the, the most well-known puppets. They, they, they managed to keep some sort of a fear-laden peace in that area, and there didn't seem to be a lot of conflict there. But behind the scenes, these things were happening. Uh, that by the same time around in the in the late 70s, um, the, the 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 Soviet Union, the, then the Soviet Union, even even went in and invaded Afghanistan, but they didn't invade Afghanistan for the oil or the poppy fields in Afghanistan. No, they wanted the Muslim shot callers that lived in those mountains, the men that really run the consensus and the opinions of the Middle East. These are their highly respected religious leaders. And they live hidden in the mountains. They they live very simple. Some of y'all call them the Taliban. Uh, call them what you want. They're 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 the true word for the Muslim people in the Middle East. And that's why the Russians went over there, or the Soviets at the time. And that's why they went over there. And that's why it was such a big tank assault and not a lot of bombing. They had to be on the ground to find these guys. And the United States, of course, with Brzezinski with Brzezinski's help and telling them that God was on their side. Um, he went over there and, um, and, and put into place uh, another CIA operative that every one of you know. His name was Tim Osman. He's also known as Osama bin Laden. Uh, and that's Scout behind me. He's a cool guy. Uh, Osama bin Laden was not an Arab. He was not a Saudi. In fact, this man was like six and a half foot tall. And I believe he was Italian, but hey, whatever. That's what CIA operatives do. Now, when the military and the government do things, they look at years in advance, y'all. So they knew what they were doing, um, basically by stirring up and, and putting popular opinion towards the U.S. as being an ally, uh, whispering into the ear of the, of the Muslim people and, uh, let, and, and making them believe that Russia was the, was the true enemy and the only enemy that they had. So they really lied to these people. Thus the repercussions from 9-11 and how they were able to use that same Muslim boogeyman lie. And let me say that one more time. It's a Muslim boogeyman lie. There is no Muslim threat. There never was. That's part of this plan. 
Now, when I was in the Navy between 81 and 83, they were formulating the plan to make uh, the terrorism, the war on terror. It was the beginning planning stages of the war on terror. And like I said, the Beirut bombings in 86, the bombing of the cold during the Clinton administration, uh, the, the first bombing of the Twin Towers in New York City were all preludes to what happened on September 11th, 2001 and the complete takeover of the people that control the oil and our energy source. Um, so when we go back and look at this through history, you can see now why it's leading up to it. So what they're doing, and with that brief history that I just gave you, they managed to be attacked by OPEC in the 70s, created the Muslim boogeyman terrorist lie in the 80s and early 90s, uh, culminated that plan and made it come to life in September 11th, 2001. And since then, and I'm, I'm going to say it like it is, since then people have been happy and reveled in the deaths of Muslim terrorists and Muslim terrorism. I'm sorry, y'all. It was a lie. And I ain't sorry. I'm going to tell you it was a lie. And that's just the way it is. Um, they had to make an enemy. And what better enemy? And also, I want you to pay attention. You got to go back to 1992 and the Rio summit down in uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, the big earth summit that they had, where they said that, and we were about four and a half billion people at the time. They said that we would not be able to sustain population on the planet past six billion people uh, with the way that we were living and the, and the way we were consuming things. We cannot go past six billion people. We're now at almost eight billion people. I want you to do a little simple math. Uh, 8 billion minus 2 billion equals 6 billion. And there happen to be 2 billion Muslims on the planet. You get it now? They will get your support to murder people that are innocent over a lie, over a fake enemy, over something that's not happened. And they're doing it again. So that's why I'm going to bust out this lie of the United States federal government and the New World Order and their International Monetary Fund Rothschild banking sons of bitches. They're going to switch the currency anyway. There will not be a World War III. And if there is, it's probably not going to be televised. It's going to be a banker's war. And it has been a banker's war, y'all, because I'm going to point out another well-known fact and something that you should all know. World War I never ended. It never ended. In the 240-something years we've, we've been a, country, a nation, we've only been at peace for eight years. So we need to think about that. We've always destroyed the people that stood against us or were different than, than the American way and what the United States federal government planned and, and manipulated this country into being. Look at what they did to the Sioux. Look at what they did to all the Native Americans. Look at what they did to the black man. Look at how they demonized Mexico. Look at how now all of a sudden Canada is the bad guy. Uh, and now Venezuela. Uh, and now all of a sudden you're hearing stories about it's the most oil rich country in the world and people are eating rotted meat. Well, you mark my words, and y'all down there in Venezuela, y'all best get ready for a little bit of democracy because I got a feeling it's coming your way, and that'll be the next terrorist threat will be Venezuela. And the thing with Saudi Arabia, you're like, well, Bill, man, they always talk about they're our allies, and we got, we got Trump sitting over a globe, a glowing globe, looking like a bunch of wizards um, with the Saudis and talking about how they were our allies. Well, hey, y'all, one day they're our allies, the next day they're, and the next day they're our enemy. Welcome to the New World Order news entertainment industry that spoon feeds you lies. These are lies. Saudi Arabia has never been anybody's ally. They are the most self-righteous people in the world. And I'm going to say this out loud because if you're a Saudi citizen, you don't have to work. They import workers more like wage slaves uh, from the Philippines, from all, from all over the world. Uh, the FODs would even come over here to the United States back when I was a young man. Uh, a little guy, uh, and they would go to. They were at Columbus College. They would come to our colleges and everything for free, as as um, and on and on student loans when they come from a multi-billionaire family, almost trillion dollars worth of uh, uh, that royal family over there in Saudi Arabia. So these are the people that stir the pot. They work with Israel. They work with the United States. Um, but that's not why Saudi Arabia is being demonized right now. Saudi Arabia, like they did in 1973 to 1974, have gotten bigger than their britches. They see that they're the real true leaders of the Middle East or think they are, and they're going to take back their power. But they're not going to have an oil embargo. No, they don't want to lose any money. OPEC was really dumb when they did that 
uh, back in the early 70s because they lost billions of dollars uh, by trying to shut off the oil supply to the United States. Uh, so uh, this time they're still going to sell their oil, but they're going to sell it to the Russians. The Russians are, are, are right now going behind our back. It's why they meddled with the election. It's why they put all the things on social media and all the stuff to keep us uh, fighting each other and not thinking about what they're doing. The Russians are very smart in a covert way. They're probably some of the best spies and some of the best espionage um, soldiers in the world. I mean, besides the British, <laughs> the British are about the best intelligence gatherers. And the British and the Mossad and the CIA, uh, they all work together, y'all. They're all in the same bed. So before you get to worrying about the, the news story that you hear about this journalist being murdered and tortured and, and killed, it's to demonize the Saudis. And in my opinion, they should be. I don't, I don't care for that country, just like I don't care for Israel and what they do to the Palestinians. Uh, for, for a power supply that they found, um, what was it, just trillions of cubic feet of natural gas off the shores of Gaza and that in 2000. And that's why the last 18 years have been the genocide of the Palestinian people. Nobody really wants to think, and none of you, I mean, not none of you, I'm not going to say that because I don't know all of you, but many of the, the general consensus out there is to hate all Middle Easterners and think that they hate us. Did y'all ever stop and think that these people are just simple people? that live like us and just want to live and have families and worship their God and be who they are. But no, nah, man, that's all bad and that's all evil and everything's about taking away America and Sharia law and all these other things that they throw out there is fear. Everything thrown at you that's fear for you to fear that doesn't have a peaceful solution is a lie. It's a lie to trap your mind. So I said, Venezuela has just announced that they're going, well, they announced it here within, within this month. Uh, that they were going to the, to change to the euro, that they were no longer going to use the petrodollar. The petrodollar is no longer going to be used by Saudi Arabia. These are the two most outspoken and oil-rich countries uh, out there to speak up. So now all of a sudden they're the enemy. I also want you to notice that after 9-11, Bin Laden was supposed to be a Saudi, right? And when we had nobody flying on, on September 12th, or September 11th and September 12th and September 13th of 2001, the Bin Laden family was allowed to fly out of the United States before any investigation or anything happened. You also notice that the Saudis were not um, invaded, in fact, or, or by the United States. In fact, the Saudis were so scared that the other Arab nations were going to attack them for their lies and for bringing on the demonization of their people, that that's why we went over there with Operation De Desert Shield to protect the Saudis, to protect the New World Order buddies. That's all they are. They, they got a club, and like I said, we ain't in it. But the cool thing is there's only about 5,000 of them, and there's a, there's a billion of us. So sooner or later, the people of this planet are going to take over, and it'll probably be after the collapse. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know when. I'm, I'm not Notre Dame. <laughs> so I just wanted you to realize the truth about what happened. What you're seeing today in 2018 actually began October of 1973 with the OPEC oil embargo. And from that point in time, because before that time, all those nations were our allies. All those nations were our friends. All those nations became rich because of our overconsumption of gasoline and oil and petroleum. So we had to really look at that. It was after the oil embargo that they slowly and methodically put the idea in the American, uh, well, in the, in the civilized world, I guess, and, uh, and their thought process that these are the enemies. These little guys are running around wanting to cut off your head and do crazy things to your daughter. Uh, all lies, y'all. Now in saying that, I want to point out one thing for y'all come out here and say, well, Bill, the Muslims this and Bill, the, they did this and they did that. I want you to think about something really, really hard. I want you to think about this. I want you to look at your family sitting around you at the dinner table um, or just you at work with your friends or you, or you hanging out. And then all of a sudden, bombs start falling out of everywhere. All of a sudden, your house is blown up and you have to go in and get body parts of your children off the walls. Think about that. That's what happened to these innocent people. So sure, I'm sure they hate us for that. I'm sure they hate us for that. But there wasn't two billion Muslims wanting to attack us. But I'm sure two billion Muslims wonder how stupid we the people are for falling for these lies. Because they didn't do nothing. 
the people of this planet have done nothing. It's our governments and the leaders, the so-called leadership, that keeps the turmoil going, that keeps us fighting each other. And in saying that, you know what I'm about to tell you now. Our brotherhood and our unity is the most important thing that we can focus on today. We have to focus on who's right next to us. Who do we know? Who do we trust? Our brother, our sister, our tribe. This is the only way to defeat this great evil, y'all. And it is a great evil. It is a very great evil. It makes George Orwell's 1984 look like a comic book. And that is some reading materials that many of y'all might want to pick up. Uh, and think about that. Because also in 1984, they started Rex 84, the contingency plan to uh, get all these Central Americans that were going to run away from a war in Central America and put them in FEMA camps. They just tested that out, y'all. So if war breaks out in, in Venezuela and Central America, as it's most likely about to happen, those people are going to come up through Mexico and try to get to America for safety. And they already have over 100 FEMA camps. They already have the people in place to separate them from their children. They already have all of that in place. It's called Rex 84, R-E-X 84. That was made in 1984. Also, uh, since uh, September 11, 2001, we've been under the Fascist Patriot Act, which makes uh, – the Constitution null and void. So all of you out there screaming about rights, all of you out there screaming about the Constitution, the power is in the hands of the puppet president, so to speak, but that's the man that speaks for the new world order. So they can do whatever they want, just like they're getting away with the pipelines, just like they're getting away with the fracking, just like they're getting away with the deregulation and poisoning our water. Another reason why you should look at the fact that our water supply is so important to us, y'all. Without water, we're dead within days within days it's not even like starving somebody out but back back in the day they used to starve people out just like did y'all also know that the, the 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 sioux indians were the only nation ever to defeat the united states federal government on this soil ever do you ever stop and think about that and how did they get rid of them they starved them out by putting a bounty on the buffalo by killing by killing millions of buffalo taking away their food source, and they starve those people out. Well, they don't have to kill the buffalo anymore. They don't have to destroy crops of food. They've already taken the water. They've already taken the water, and you have to buy it. And if you don't think that's the truth, go look at your water bill. Go go, go find some clean water. Go, go collect rainwater. Go do anything that's illegal now. Now you get the picture to take out a population of people the size of the United States and you want to do it quickly, you have to do something like that. And taking the water is very clever of the New World Order. And that's why Nestle's going around buying it up. Uh, they'll make money selling it to you. And it also has that more devious and diabolical purpose of taking out our population. Now, I don't say this in fear. As I was saying, there is a solution to this. The solution is, first of all, step away from the lie. Step away from the TV set and look into yourself. Look into your own heart. Be the brilliant human beings that you are and think about this. Think about it very carefully because you know inside of you that something's wrong. You know inside of you that something awful is coming. But it's just a change. It's just another part of history. And we're going to live through it. We're going to make it through it because you know what? When times really do get hard, when, when things really do look, look gloom and glum, maybe then I'm hoping that we look at our brother, not as a black brother, not as a white brother, not as a Latino brother, not as a gay brother, not as a woman or a man, but as the tribe that will stand up against the new world order and their lapdog United States federal government. So think about that. We, the people of the world, are the biggest tribe and they fear us. They fear us enough to take out whole populations of people, to demonize whole regions and religions. They fear us enough to keep us afraid. They keep us afraid so we don't see the truth, that we keep thinking that we need some protection, some war daddy to take care of us. Well, I just want to know something. How can the war daddy take care of America when all our military is around the world and not here? You ever stop and think about that? Because uh, there's, there's one other little fact you need to know. For protection here on United States soil, there's less than 
police and National Guard combined is just right at a million. Just a million armed people. But what the other evil countries of the world fear, and a, and a Jap Japanese admiral has said it very well, is they feel that, that they're an armed America would, would be the resurgent. The, the resurgence that, that behind every blade of grass, there would be a patriot, an armed patriot fighting back. So I want you to rethink your patriotism. Is it to the government or is it to your country? And is it if it's to your country, what's the country made up of? The country is made up of the three, the first three words of the United States, the preamble to the United States Constitution. This country is we the people. This is our decision. And we've allowed a failed republic and bought out leaders to, to, to demonize us and to put us in the jeopardy that they put us in. Because that's what the United States federal government has done, has put we the people in jeopardy. We are the ones hated around the world, not so much the United States federal government, because they think we can do something about it. And you know what? I think we can. And it don't need to be civil war. It don't need to be a new revolutionary war. It doesn't need to be a war at all. They are funded by us. I want you to think about this now. The United States federal government and our military is funded by us, we the people. The national debt is to us, not to China, not to other countries. It's our money that they barter on on our social security number and how much money we'll pay back in taxes. They've dipped into this a lot, even claiming to have lost $23 trillion, yet say we're $21 trillion in debt. That math adds up to the, we, the people, being $2 trillion to the, to the good in the green. So I really want you to pay attention to that. Uh, we don't owe anybody, and we damn sure don't owe this money-grubbing, murdersome United States federal government. So please think about that. And in saying that, I don't mean we have to get rid of government. We do need to take care of each other. People do need to take care of the elderly. We need to take care of the sick. We need to take care of the hunger. But they're hungry. We need to take care of our homeless, which is a, a, a rate ungodly right now in our country. We're becoming third world. We have been slated as being third world. So there you go. We are the solution. We are the power and we are the backbone that is America. So let's show it, Americans. Let's show it, my American tribe. Let's show the rest of the world that we can turn our backs and not pay the taxes to them, not pay to the the um, the lives of the military, if the corporations quit buying corporate stuff that you know you don't need, buy things from your brother, buy things from your sister, buy things from people that have local businesses, buy local, eat local, live local, think local. And as I've told you before, then we can take all our little communities and change regions. Those regions can get together and change this country. Bet that. I love y'all. I love y'all enough to tell you that these people are lying to you. They have lied to you for so long. They lied to us before we were born. Their lies beget lies. Their lies beget hate. And the hatred is towards us, we the people. And guess what? We're not that way. Matter of fact, we're the most giving nation in the world. And we always have been. Let's take that back. Let's just make America America again. You know, we the people. We the people. I love that. I love we the people because that's my tribe. Y'all think about this today. Be careful how you just see something in a news article and see a headline and all of a sudden your emotions and your opinions sway back and forth and back and forth. Be steady in who you are. Be you. Be free and die living. That's the only way to live. That's the only way to be. But by all means, don't live in fear. Love your brother like you love yourself. And we'll all love this planet. And we'll take it we will take it back. The new world order is just the smallest, the biggest minority in the world is these new world order banking scumbags. Take it back. They can't survive without money. So learn to do something without money. Quit buying, quit crying, and let's all get back to trying to unite our country, unite ourselves, be brothers and sisters again. For love reasons, number one, I'm going to say that. We should love each other because that's the right thing to do. But now, at this point in history, it's the most important thing we can do for ourselves and for other people around the world that have little babies and grandbabies and kids just like you. They just want to live, too. 
So think about the life. Look at the history and see how we got here today. And let's see what we can do. All right. Peace. I love you. And don't live in fear.